Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Giridhar for this opportunity. I'd be speaking to you on traction diabetic uh, macular edema. Uh, we have heard about anomalous PVD, which is the cause of uh, the problem that occurs in uh, diabetics. If the vitreous liquefaction outpaces the cortical separation or there is an abnormal adhesion, it leads to vitromacular traction or if there is fibrovascular organization of the vitreous remnants left on the retinal surface, then we have a So the diagnosis is by SDOCT, more of which you have already heard about it. This is a patient with VMT uh, and the patient who has got an ERM. So these are the two conditions that we see in diabetic tractional edema. Here the patient would, who presented uh, to us with ERM which increased over a period of time with drop in vision and we did surgery to get reasonable success. Now what are the steps that we adopt are one is the posterior vitreous uh, detachment that we achieve. Sometimes in diabetics because uh, you need to take a lot of care because there's a lot of additions. Here one I've, I've stained the vitreous with uh, triamcinolone and using a pick I've made a small opening in the posterior hyaloid phase and I gently lift it from the attachment at the uh, fovea before I proceed on to the, to the optic disc. So as you see here we have separated it out and then I go on to separate it from the uh, uh, disc because now in diabetics the macula is always very edematous and has, is prone for having trauma. So this would be one way that you could uh, reduce the trauma and later on I extend it outwards uh, to see that we remove the entire vitreous. Now coming to the second step, a lot of these patients also have an epiretinal membrane or a premacular cortex which Dr. Giridhar was talking about. So this is a patient with VMT. We induce the PVD as you could see here and uh, after you induce the PVD, we stained the uh, uh, and found that there's a lot of premacular cortex. So actually this has been stained with uh, uh, brilliant blue and we see that there's a lot of premacular cortex which actually was negatively staining. So we removed this first. So one needs to take a lot of care because vitreoschisis is extremely common in diabetics. So this is one other factor that you have to keep in mind that just by inducing PVD you are not going to release the traction. You also need to remove the premacular cortex and you would find that this is very much adherent to the fovea. So you need to take care so that you remove it gently from the foveal attachment that it has. So I actually separate out all around and then lift it out from the fovea in the end. Third aspect is the ILM removal. So uh, if you remove the IM, ILM, you are sure that you have removed all the ERM and the uh, premacular cortex that, I, that uh, has been alluded to. There was a study done on human autopsy eyes which showed that 44% of eyes with spontaneous PVD or those which were induced actually had uh, vitreous remnants. So that is the reason why you need to remove this premacular cortex. The recurrence rate of epiretinal membrane is reduced with ILM removal. So these are other situations that uh, requires ILM removal and it's also been shown that in diabetics there's a taut ILM which is the cause of traction. So I think one of the things that they were talking about was the fovea sparing ILM peeling. So here is a diabetic patient whom you see there's a large cystoid space. So we do a fovea sparing ILM peeling. We go all around gently and come up to the area wherein you come to see the cystoid spaces and stop at that. So this is proceeded all around and in this way actually you can prevent the deroofing of the cystic wall that you would, you would see it which causes uh, lamellar or total uh, macular hole. So we come all around. So in this way one could uh, and you cut off the excess of ILM with using a cutter. So this would be a fovea sparing ILM peeling which uh, has been alluded to. Just to look at some of the cases that you would see, this is a patient who presented to us with 624 vision, not much of vitreous traction. We injected Ozodex, the patient vision improved to 69 but we started seeing that the traction with the broad attachment started. 
The vision dropped to 618 in July, one month later, with increasing traction. And we advised surgery, but the patient was not willing. In August, it dropped further to 660, and we advocated surgery at this time. So you can see that diabetic patients have a process that goes on. It's not that one could be just, it would be confined to one single uh, entity. Hemant, can you conclude? I'm yeah. sorry, I'm extremely sorry for that. No, no problem. So this is another patient showing a vitro macular traction which, which uh, increased over time. Just to show you another interesting situation was, patient who had a vitrectomy for PDR with vitreous hemorrhage, came with blurring of vision. This is due to an epiretinal membrane which occurs very commonly in diabetics. That's the reason why you need to peel the ILM in some of these whenever there's an epiretinal membrane. And this is the post-surgical outcome with improvement in vision. So these are some other cases. Octoplasmin you already heard. The best is an editorial on VMT in AGO, which tells you that vitrectomy is still the gold standard for large vitromacular adhesion and epiretinal membrane. And in conclusion, we need to recognize fractional diabetic macular edema as the cause of visual loss. OCT helps in the diagnosis. Vitrectomy is the uh, procedure of choice and uh, fovea sparing island peeling in diabetics, uh, you know, prevents foveal damage. Thank you.